So when we become monks, newly ordained, we have to forget, forget what we have learned in the world. We have to be completely like a newborn baby, learn everything in you. Learn how to dress, learn how to wash, learn how to pee, learn how to eat, learn how to take care of our things. We don't have a lot of things, but the things that we, we have, that belong to us, we have to take utmost care of it. That means we have to take utmost care of our bow and the three ropes. When there's just a little hole in our three ropes and we see it, we have to instantly mend it, otherwise it is an offense. We have to take care of our things, we have to take care of the kuti. We have to learn how to become responsible people. I mean, in the West that is not, not necessarily taught to us. Huh? Uh, <clears throat> some of the Thais remark, you know, when they see, see one of you, uh, I mean, he never has washed dishes, you know, in his whole life, you know, you can see it. You can see it from how you wash your bowl. <clears throat> We have to learn how to wash the bowl properly. We have to learn how to, to try our clothes, to wash our clothes. Huh? Everything has to be learned anew. So, I mean, there will be a lot of comments about our doing our action. I mean, and we have to learn to accept them gratefully. Huh? It's not, you know, that's not somebody, you know, who has a grudge against us, you know, to correct us. It's something that we have to learn anew. We have become monks, you know, and we have to learn a new way of life. So if it's, and a lot of things we just don't know in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can read a lot, but you know, these little things, you know, they are not in the books at all, you know, they are not, cannot be explained in the books. I mean, we have to learn, you know, by doing things, huh? by making mistakes huh? and being corrected. Huh? And being corrected again, and being corrected again, and you will see it for the next five or ten years, you will be constantly corrected. By this monk, oh, you don't do this like this, you have to do it like this. That monk, you know, tells us, no, don't do it like this, you know, you have to do it like this. And we have to be grateful, we have to have this attitude, you know, thank you for pointing out the right thing for me to do. Not feeling a grudge against this person, not thinking this person has something against us. Here, it's at, at, at least here at this monastery, I mean, there is no, no bhikkhu, you know, who has a grudge against you. Everybody wants to help you. So, I mean, take it like this. And try to improve yourself. Huh? Not just saying yes, 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 and don't do it. Huh? That's not the proper way. Huh? Try to do it, you know, and, and try to understand it. And only once, <coughs> once you've done it, you know, like this, you will see huh? there's a value to it. There's a reason for it. Maybe you don't understand the reason. Maybe you want to know the reason beforehand. But you cannot understand it unless you do it. A lot of the things. I mean, there, there doesn't seem to be any reason for why we are doing it like this. But uh, the moment you do it for a while, you will see the reason. How we, how we keep our kuti, how, where we place our things. I mean, it, there's all a reason. I mean, if you put always the things at the same place in our kuti, if you put all our ropes in the bowl, I mean, we just need to pick up the bowl in the morning and don't have to look for the six things that belong into the bowl or that we need for eating. Hmm? Or where, where did I put this, where did I put that, you know. All this thinking will be eliminated and you will have a lot more samadhi, you will have a lot more ease of mind when you know where the things are. Where is my flashlight? Where did I put it? You know, if it's always at the same place, you know, you will find it instantly, you grab it and you have it. Hmm? That's the whole reason, you know, that, uh, to keep up, hmm? keep up the boot, uh, keep up your kuti, you know, in the same way. Hmm? To, do, to do your bowl in the same way, then you don't have to think about it. Hmm? And you can do your meditation while, while you're washing your bowl. 
You know, you can repeat putto, putto, putto. You know, all people are suppressed while you're doing your poor because you know it and it's always the same. That's why, that's why I tell you when you take care of my poor or, you know, later on take care of my putti, I mean, that's how you learn it. Hmm? I'll learn it, you know, that, 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 that the things are always in the same place and they should be in the same place. Once I set up my kuti, it, it's not yet finished yet. I mean, you will you will have to learn it. You know, things belong at a certain place, you know, so that we don't have to look around, you know, and 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 waste our time with looking for this and looking for that. And we have only so few things. You know? I mean, it's very easy. Don't you know? Don't do it today like this, or t- and tomorrow like that. You know? Always do it the same way. The same, same for eating, you know, the same for sitting down, you know, the same for washing. Don't, don't do it one day like this and another day like that because you just don't feel like That's not the way. We always do it in the same way. It eases our life and it doesn't make us think about, you know, just like walking meditation, walking up and down. I mean, we don't think about turning around and turning back and turning forward. I mean, we just think about our Buddha, you know? The body knows knows how when to turn, you know, and that's it. And we can can concentrate on our Buddha and keep our samadhi. Also, we can keep our samadhi while we're eating, you know, reflecting about the food. Don't worry about where, where is this or where is that. We put everything in the bowl and we just eat, you know, from the top to the bottom, from the left to the right, like the Lord Buddha teaches us. So we don't have to worry, where is the delicious food, where is it hidden, you know, I, I'm sure I put it in my bowl, you know, I mean, now I can't find it, no, no, I'm just eat, you know, from the top to the bottom, from the left to the right. <coughs> and investigate the food while you're eating, you know, to investigate, you know, the sensation on the tongue, what, what is it is like, huh? And being able, you know, being able also to, to sit, you know, to sit quietly. You know? When we're listening to a talk, I mean, our hand doesn't go there and there and scratches here and scratches here. I mean, it's, it's, it's not the body that wants to be scratched. It's the chitta that is restlessness and finds some way out. You know? Wants to do something, you know, because it's bored. And it's the same thing, you know, it doesn't matter if you sit here and listen to a talk or sit here in your kuti and do your meditation. I mean, the chitta is restless. The chitta is the driver of the car. The chitta is the driver of the body. I mean, that is something that we really have to understand. Huh? If the chitta is calm, the body is completely calm. Hmm? But if the chitta is not calm, I mean, the body is you know, displaced in restlessness of the body, you know. Just like a monkey, you know, running here and running... Here and fro, yeah? I mean, we, we chose this life, you know, to come to the end of Dukkha. Hmm? If we think that the dukkha is born in the body, I mean, then just get rid of the body and there is no more dukkha. But you will see that is not the case. We come here to ordain you know, that one goal, you know, to overcome dukkha. We, we came here, you know, because of dukkha, because we feel so much. Mat, mat, mat. Huh? Just try to become. Huh? Just concentrate on your Buddha or just concentrate on the breath. Huh? And... I mean, just let these unpleasant sensations, you know, pass by. They come and they go, you know. I mean, you will notice when the sweat goes out, you know, you don't have to constantly grab here and grab here. This is a training. I mean, do you remember, do you remember the sutta, you know, where the, where the, where the Lord Buddha talks about the monk's training and compare it with the training of a, of the, of the elephant, war elephant for the king? Huh? You remember that? <clears throat> if you remember that, you know, first of all, you know, the wild elephant is caught, you know, and put to a pole until, you know, with a, with a, with a strong, 
What is it called? A strong huh? rope. With a strong rope, huh? so that it cannot that it cannot run away. Once you know, after a few days, you know, it knows it cannot run away, so it sits down, hmm? or it lays down, you know, and goes to sleep. Once, once, the, once the elephant is calmed like that, that is compared to our chitta. Once our chitta is calm in samadhi, I mean, then we can start the training. We can start the training, and the training of the war elephant is, you know, you know, putting the spears, you know, into the sides of the war elephant, and he should not move. Huh? I mean, these are painful, wrecking feelings. Huh? I mean, once we feel these painful, wrecking feelings, we are aware that these are painful, wrecking feelings and don't move. Hmm? That's how a war elephant hmm? is, is trained. Hmm? And that is, that is just, the, as you said, you know, it's a training like a monk is trained or like a recluse is trained, you know, to, to get to the end of dukkha. I mean, we have to stand up towards this unpleasant feeling. Otherwise, I mean, how can we ever attain calm? How can we ever attain wisdom? If you don't understand what is, oh. last time, you know, last time I mentioned, you know, the interest is the most important thing. If you're interested, what is feeling? Oh. I mean, it comes and it goes, we notice, you know, it comes and it goes. Oh. It constantly arises, you know, there it arises here, now it arises there, you know, I mean, if you're constantly with our feelings, I mean, there's no quietude, there's no stillness, there's no solitude. We are constantly running out. Huh? We are constantly following these, these, these bananas like a monkey, you know. He sees a banana in this tree, so he jumps to this tree. He, then he sees one in that tree, and then he jumps to that tree. I mean, never. There is no end to it. Huh? And there is no end to our feelings. There is no end to our memories. There is no end to our thoughts. Huh? If you don't put it an end to it. The moment we show interest for a thought, the mo- it becomes stronger. The moment we show interest to, to one of the feelings, it becomes stronger. I mean, just to, don't be interested. Just be interested in one object, yeah? be it the object of investigation or be it the object <coughs> of calm. Be it the Buddha or the breath or you know, in, in investigation of the body. You know, just stick there. Huh? Don't let yourself move. Just be aware, you know, of painful feelings. Huh? I mean, if they are becoming so painful, then investigate. What is pain? I mean, you believe, you constantly believe, I'm in pain. Huh? I mean, the, the, the principle of another that the Lord Buddha gave us, you know, was very clear. That's not me. Hmm? That feeling is not me. That feeling does not belong to me. That feeling is not myself. Huh? Who knows that there is a feeling? Does the feeling know it's a feeling? Hmm? Ask, next time you have a feeling, ask it. Do you know that you are feeling. Huh? Who knows that it's a feeling? Who knows it's a thought? Who knows it's a memory? Who knows it's a good memory? Who knows it's a bad memory? Who knows that it's a good thought or a bad thought? Does the bad thought know it's a bad thought? Does the thought know it's a thought? Who knows that? I mean, to this instant, hmm, that who knows, that's what we have to go to. Hmm? That is exactly in our chitta. Hmm? That who knows. It wants to know, it goes out, you know, wants to know this and wants to know that. No? Um, but we have to go actually the other way around, you know, we have to go inward to find that one who knows. No? And just to stick with it, not to let it go out. No? Find this sensation, find that uh, sensation. There is no end to sensation. Understand what is feeling, understand what is thought, and understand, you know, and use the principle of anatta, that's not me, that doesn't belong to me, that's not myself. There is a thought, it's not I'm thinking. There is a feeling, it's not I'm, I'm feeling. Hmm? But we are so taken in, we are so used to that these things are me and mine. Hmm? I mean, the whole, the whole ego, the all the what we think about ourselves, who we are, and, and, and what we are, is made out of five components, huh? or five groups. It's a group of the body. We believe, you know, the moment we see, look in the mirror, that's me, yes. Huh? I mean, uh, 20 years ago I looked a little bit different, but it's still me. 
and in 20 years I look still different, you know, and that's me. Huh? <clears throat> and when the body dies, there is no me, huh? I mean, then we lost our me, then we lost our I. Is that what we believe? I mean, if we believe it like this, then we are in the wrong place here. Huh? That's the same thing for feeling. Look how the body constantly changes, huh? It changes, you know, from one state to other. Today, you know, it's healthy, and the next day it's sick. You know, one day it's, it's strong, and the next day it's weak. Huh? Next day, one day it's hot, and the next moment it's cold. Huh? It constantly changes. There's no constancy with the body. Then it feels hungry, then it feels this, and it feels that. Matt, please, 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 huh? be quiet. It's the same thing. It's the same thing for thoughts. It's the same thing for memories. We don't invite the memories to come up. We don't invite the thoughts to come up. Huh? They just come on their own. Huh? How can that be me? You know, some things you know we really don't want to think about, but they're constantly bothering us. Some things we really don't want to remember, and they're constantly bothering us. Who brings it up? Huh? Have you ever thought about it? I mean, we want to, when we sit down, we want to think only about Buddha, you know, but, but two seconds or thirty seconds later, I mean, all th sort of thoughts come in. Huh? We don't want them, huh? but they don't go away. So, because we don't understand the nature of thoughts, huh? because we are still interested in this thought, because we believe that they are me and that they are mine. I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, they just lure us into believing that is me, that is mine. Just like when we sit in the movie, you know, we are lured into, you know, participating in this movie. It starts, you know, we, we, we associate with this person or associate with that person. We think about this person. But, you know, who is sitting there and watching it? Huh? I mean, we are we're completely, you know, just like, like in a in an interesting movie. I mean, we're completely taken in by this movie. Hmm? Now, when we close our eyes, you know, I mean, how can we not be taken in by this inner movie? Huh? It constantly is there, you know, it never stops. Huh? The movie that we go and see, you know, I mean, it, it stops after one hour or after two hours, or, and it's a long one after three hours. Huh? But this movie doesn't stop, it goes on, you know, it, it goes on for this life, it has gone on for the last life, you know, and for the last previous millions and billions of lives, and it will go on for the next billions of life if we don't make a stop to it, because we don't understand, you yeah? And that is something, you know, that we have to learn, we have to understand, you know, what is making these things, huh? And that the first thing, you know, to, to understanding is, you know, not to take sides in it, huh? That means, you know, not to consider this to be mine, or belonging to me, or being my possession. It's not me. All these things are not me, are not mine, doesn't belong to me. So, I mean, then, then ask yourself the question and get the interest. Who is that, actually? Huh? And then it always boils down to one thing, to the observer, or to the one who knows. Hmm? So go there, huh? see, the one who knows is there. You know, when we go into samadhi, I mean it falling down. Huh? And it will fall asleep just like the war element will fall asleep, you know, when he sees, you know, there's no way to escape. Huh? I mean, if you have a tight rope on it, you know, just like we have a tight rope on our samadhi, I mean, we will have to fall asleep. But not falling asleep in the normal worldly way, but we fall into a quietude. I mean, we fall into a rest, where there is rest, where there is peacefulness, where there is happiness, where there is satisfaction. The first time in our life we find a place, we find a hideout that has some peacefulness and gives us some shelter, huh? a safe haven. Huh? Gives us some shelter where we find, ah, that's a... And we could stay there forever, but, of course, the Kilesas don't allow us to stay there forever because they come in necking at our door and then... Sooner or later we will give in to them. Hmm? You, you really, you really have to use these three characteristics, anicca, anatta, dukkha. Hmm? Uh, that's what I was talking mostly about it today. Hmm? 
Anicca, he thinks I am permanent, and the body is impermanent. I mean, now we have a good feeling, then we have a bad feeling, then we have a terrible feeling, then we are depressed, then we are happy, then we are just the opposite of what we just feel a minute ago. Huh? How can these feelings, you know, when they are constantly changing, be me or mine? When we think about me or mine, we always have a notion, you know, that we are something fixed, something solid, something that cannot be changed. In the end, this will come true. There is something that is fixed, that cannot be changed, that has never changed and is not born and will never die. That is the purely the chitta. That's the one that is never dying, you know, that's not changing. But the filth that, you know, occupies the uh, chitta or the avicca that, you know, has the chitta in its hand, you know, makes it doing all sorts of things. No? And we have to, to use our investigation to get hold of these things. We have to get uh, used to investigation, you know, to understand that the body is nothing beautiful, that the body is mostly a pure, pure dukkha, no? pure dissatisfaction. I mean, there is nothing satisfactory within the body. No? I mean, we think it's satisfaction when we are hungry and eat something and we are full. That, we, that means, you know, for us, you know, the body gives us satisfaction. But actually, you know, we eat only to relieve ourselves from the dukkha, from the dissatisfaction of this body. When we relieve it of, of, of piss you know, or, or shit, you know, I mean, ah, we feel so much relieved, you know. But I mean, not, not realizing at that time, you know, that the, Buddha crea- uh, that the body created all this shit and this piss, huh? And not only this, you know, by our excessive drinking or, 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 or eating habit, you know, that this produces this amount or excessive amount. Huh? So we have to investigate all this. Huh? The body is just a car. I mean, it has nothing to do. I mean, it cannot go on its own. If there is no chitta, it will not go. And the body is only one thing. Feeling is the same thing. Feeling don't come uninvited. They are not me. They are not mine. They don't belong to me. Huh? And they are constantly fleet, of fleeting nature. I mean, they constantly change. Eh? This moment I feel like this, that moment I feel like this. This moment the pain is in the right knee, the next moment it is in the left knee. Huh? And then it is in the back, then it is there, and there, and there. And constantly, our sati constantly jumps with the pain because it doesn't like it, what, uh, wasn't, wants to get rid of it, you know, and the kilesa produce it at another point, you know, and so they, they, they lure us out. Huh? <clears throat> they lure us out, you know, and then after one hour of meditation, actually we have not been on our Buddha for, for, for one minute. Because we always follow the sensation or that sensation, the painful sensation, or be it, you know, we hear, we hear voices, you know, or falling for our memories, or falling for our thoughts. Huh? Huh? I mean, be aware of that. Then the chitta constantly goes there in assuming, and also assuming this and assuming this, thinking about it. This must be like this, that must be like that. That is not knowing. That just assuming. That's all what we do. We assume this is like this because, you know, I mean, it has been in the past like this. I mean, as if Anisha would not exist at all. I mean, we, we see, we constantly are confronted with our nature, we are constantly confronted with impermanent. But we believe, you know, this moment is just like the last moment. Huh? So then we assume, because the last moment was like this, you know, and that was also an assumption. Huh? We assume this moment must be like this. Huh? And that's where we always go wrong. I mean, the more we, can, we find the way to our heart, the more we really know. No, by not understanding something. No, by seeing the truth of it. Just like open Naiko, open and see for yourself. Open your, open your heart. Eh? Open your heart for once, you know, and see the truth of it. Eh? I mean, and, you know, when you see the truth about the body, you will be utterly disgusted by the nature of this body. How could I ever cling to this kind of mess, eh? when you see it truly? If you don't see see truly, I say, oh, that's a wonderful machine, you know, it gives me all this kind of pleasure and that pleasure. That means we haven't really started our investigation. Hmm? Where does it give me pleasure? You know, when it wants to sleep and the body is tired, I mean, we, we need to lie it down, you know, where's the fun in sleeping? Hmm? I mean, if it, were, if it weren't for the body, body we didn't... 
need to sleep. Hmm? No, no, there's no point, you know, to, to sleep, you know, if we didn't add for the body. We didn't need to eat, we didn't need to drink, we didn't need to wash ourselves, we didn't need all these things. Huh? And we just carry this huge bag of, of waste around our shoulders or hanging around our neck, tying us up. Hmm? Bag of bones, you know, and flesh and shit and piss. That's what we are carrying around, you know. It's tying down our neck. Wherever we go, we have to carry that back off with us. So where is the fun in that? I mean, look. Let's look at the look. Let's look at the right things of on the right side of things. Don't look in. Uh, oh, it's beautiful. Ah, it's still healthy. No, it's it's so young. You know what is healthy? What does it? What's the meaning of healthy? What is the meaning of young? What is the meaning of old? Huh? The chitta has, uh, has no age. It doesn't get old, it doesn't, it, it's not young. It's just ageless. And we always, you know, because I, I mean, I do, I do understand it because we are brought up like this, you know, and for the last billions of life we lived like this, so I mean, how, how, how can we not huh, be fooled? But now that we found our way in the Buddhist, Buddhist religion, I mean, now we can change our attitude. Now we can change our views, you know, to the right views. No? There's anicca, there's anatta, dukkha. Anatta, not to me. Huh? I mean, you don't think, you know, just pick up the movie again, you don't think that you are the movie. So what makes you so excited about it? Think about it. Now when we close our eyes, what makes you so excited about it? I mean, once you get some, some insight, I mean, you get excited about it. But you don't get excited about the insight, you just get excited about what you can do with this insight. Hmm? You get excited about your own, uh, own way of thinking. Oh, I'm smart, you know. And then instantly ask, eh, what, what is smart? What does it mean? Why am I smart? Huh? What do I know? Huh? Ask yourself truly, honestly, what do I know? Huh? What do I really know? Ask your heart. And I mean, there is just one blank answer. Blank. Completely blank. Because there is nothing that you know. There is nothing that we know. We know only, you know, the moment we look in. We know for one moment and the next moment we don't know. Then we know and then we don't know. I mean, without, without, with our intellect, we, we draw these lines, you know, from one point to the other. I mean, we don't know, you know, we we just draw a straight line, you know. I mean, we don't even know if it's curved, you know, if it's a straight line. We think, you know, this was like this, that is like that, so this must be like this. And that's how we get fooled. No? Don't get fooled by these things. No? Always use this. Ah, oh, that's not me. That's not my thought. That's not my memory. That's not my feeling. There is a feeling. Just use it. Let's just, just learn how to use it. There is feeling. There is a pleasant feeling. There is an unpleasant feeling. And there is a neutral feeling. I mean, just, 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 just put it back to where it belongs, you know, in the right group. Hmm? There's a body. There's an unpleasant bodily feeling. There yeah, are bodily feeling and mental feeling. So, I mean, you have six different kinds of feeling. There's bodily unpleasant feeling or there's mental unpleasant feeling, you know. That's what there is, you know. That's all. And then when you look at this feeling, instantly it will disappear. But when you want to get rid of it or when you're, you don't want to get rid of it, that's where it stays on and where it's multiplied, yeah? And the moment you put interest to, to one of these feelings, it starts to grow stronger. And you think, you know, there's something wrong. I mean, it has been always there, but you've never ever looked at it. And suddenly, for the first time, I mean, you see your feelings, or you see your body, and you're startled. Ah, oh, where does that come from? That's the kilesas, you know, driving you out. Driving you out of samadhi, or driving you out of investigation. It's not, it's not the Dhamma. The Dhamma wants to know, and so it sticks to what it wants to know. It sticks to the object, you know, to the object of investigation, or it sticks to the object of samadhi. Huh? Now that. Huh? Use anicca, use anatta, huh? to make them unpersonalized. You know? The moment you think, I'm sick, you know, you're, you're gone for it. 
The moment you think, I'm, I'm tired, you know you're gone. You have to react on that. The moment you say, there is tiredness, so let's have a look, you know, what is tiredness looking like? I mean, you have to develop interest in what is going on. No? I mean, without interest, I mean, you will not do any investigation. What is, what is tiredness? Huh? What actually is tiredness? Huh? I'm interested. Let's investigate it. And then you will see, with one instant, this tiredness is gone. It cannot. So why? The moment our investigation turns on this, it cannot survive. It's there. It's gone. Because tiredness is just the, uh, the opposite of interest. The moment you show interest, there is no tiredness. So learn that, you know, and you have to learn it through experience. Huh? All, this, all this path of practice is learning through experience, not learning by man. mental associations or mental conclusions. They are only, they are only misleading. We, 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 we are learning the way, you know, we are learning the way of just like walking or just like talking. All activities that we have to learn by trial and error. Trial and error. So if it doesn't work out this time, it will work out next time. Yeah? If it work, doesn't work out next time, it will work out the next time. Hmm? So, until we get it going. Trial and error. Huh? I mean, and you, I mean, the one thing you you cannot be uh, you cannot be disheartened. That is one thing that is fatal to the practice. The moment you become disheartened. Hmm? I mean, that's the end of your practice. Or oh, the other thing is, you know, you become a <coughs> wisecrack. That's also the end of your practice because then you understand everything and you don't need to practice. Both of these things, yeah, are term, what is it, terminal illnesses. Huh? I mean, it just makes you dead. So use this, anicca, anatta, and dukkha. You know, if you see a painful feeling, ah, that's the first noble truth. There's a painful feeling. Ah, that's what the Lord Buddha talks about. There's dissatisfaction. There's painful feeling. Huh? That's the first noble truth. Huh? The second noble truth. Ah, why is this painful feeling coming? Ah, because of our desire. Hmm? And the, the, the more you, the, the more often you look, I mean, you will see how this desire creates this painful feeling. Hmm? This attachment to one thing. The attachment, you know, of wanting something the attachment of wanting something to keep, you know, if it's a pleasant feeling, or, you know, wanting to get rid of it, the unpleasant feeling. And that's, you know, what the dukkha is, that dissatisfaction. The painful feeling of the, Buddha, uh, of the body is neither, you know, neither pleasant or unpleasant to the heart. Must not. It can be, in most of the cases it is. You instantly react, yeah? I mean, a painful feeling is just a painful feeling. Investigate it so, to, so that you understand it. And remember, you know, to be grateful, you know, to, to be grateful that, you know, all the monks are looking after you. I mean, they have, I mean, what I see, you know, they have all the best interests, you know, to get you to understand the training of becoming a monk. You are all young monks, you know, trust or that. So, I mean, you need the training. You are not ready yet. Huh? I mean, it takes this kind of training, like, uh, takes five years. Five years you will be trained. Huh? Just like a child is trained by the parents. Yeah? Don't do this, don't do that, do it like this, do it like this, like that. Huh? And that's the same for us, huh? I mean, so we are grown adults and we have gone through that already. I mean, we have to go through it again. So be grateful if somebody points out the right thing for you. <laughs> What's that? Huh? Why, 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 why? No. Thank you. Huh? Thank you for showing me the right thing to do. 
not why is it like this, why is it like this? You know, that is instantly our Western mind, you know, kicks in and says, ah, I don't, I don't actually want to do it. I don't want to change my ways of, huh? I don't want to change my habits. I don't want to change my ways of behavior. But we have to change it, you know. We have become monks, you know. We, we are an example for everybody, you know. We are an example for the lay people, you know, so they can look up and say, ah, you know, this monk behaves properly, this monk is complacent, this monk is, is like that, yeah. And so they have faith in the Buddha Sasana because we, as monks, represent the Buddha Sasana, the Buddhist religion. You know? yeah? not, not just us. Uh, I mean, we are not just using our mouth, you know, to speak out. I mean, we have to be in, in, in completely in all our behavior, in all, in all our interaction. I mean, we have to become monks, and that is a tough training. Not to let our desires through, not to get angry, not to show anger, and so on, and so on. No? Because a monk shouldn't do that. A monk should be satisfied with whatever happens. He should accept it, you know, with an open heart. I mean, that doesn't mean that within his heart he doesn't feel anger, yeah, but he should not show it. He sees the he sees the wave of anger coming up, the fiery hot, and it's always fiery and hot. He sees it coming up, you know, and he swallows it down, you know. if he is good, you know, he just just put a put a put a put a, you know, and then it just disappears on itself. It's all, you know, all these angers, all these emotions come up through through the interaction of thoughts, of memories and feelings. So they, you know, they just boil themselves up, hmm? just like water, you know, being on 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 the stove, you know, and you put, you know, you put the flames high, and you know, the, the higher you put them, the, the the more it boils, you know, and the faster it boils. Don't do that, see it, you know, emotions, you know, they're, they're built up, you know. It's an avalanche that starts with a little stone, you know. And the moment you t- take that stone out of the snow, I mean, there will be no avalanche. There will be no emotion the moment you see the things, you know, that, that, that starts this thing. I mean, there will be no avalanche. There will be nothing, you know. Just like, ah, this moment, this sensation, that moment, that sensation, there's a thought, there's a memory, there's this, there's that. Just observe it, you know, just observe it, be cool about it, yeah. And don't let the things boil together. You know? The moment they boil together, they always bring us into trouble. Yeah, that's like this, you know. That's where it brings us into trouble. You know? Assertion, assumption. You know? Yeah, I'm right and he's wrong. That's where we get into trouble because then, then the other person, you know, always defends also his his view, you know, and then and then we get really angry, we argue, and we get angry, and we get pissed, you know, and it's just not helpful. As monks, we should not argue. We should question the things that are question that should be questioned, and we we should uh, accept the things that should be accepted. Also, you know, we, we seem to be from, from different countries, huh? uh, from America, from France, from Britain, from England, from Germany. I mean, the Chitta has no nationality. There is no such thing as a na- nationality within the Chitta. Forget it, you know, even when you think about your country and you're, you're getting proud of your country. I mean, it has nothing to do with the Chitta. I mean, the chitta was born of the, because of the Kama into this country or that country. It became a Jew or it became a German or it became a British or a French or an American because of his Kama. Huh? Because they are, in this country, they are like-minded people. That's why we think, you know, there's a nationality. But don't even think about nationality. I mean, for, forget the pride, you know. Oh, this time, this time, or in this World Cup, you know, the British, you know, won the World Cup, or the Germans, or the French, or the Spanish, you know, whatever. There's no pride. I mean, the pride is, you know, that we associate. You know, it's the same thing as we associate with our family. You know, that's where we are pride with our name, with our, with our, with our ancestors, and so on. But there is nothing. I mean, the chitta has now. 
I mean, it has a lot of relatives, you know, but these relatives we don't know. I mean, what we learn, you know, what we learn from our family, you know, our family tree, you know, I mean, that are, that are not necessarily our ancestors. I mean, the chitta has, has no nationality and has no ancestors. I mean, f- remember that. Yeah? I mean, whenever, whenever, you know, when, whenever you start talking and getting and excited about your own country, what, what you have achieved in this or what the country has achieved or, or wherever it is bad, I mean, you can use it in both ways. There is no national. And there is no karma, you know, that it, that, uh, There's no karma, you know, that associated with one nation or one country. It's always individual karma, always individual karma. The karma of the same, same, same souls, you know, or the same chittas, you are pulled together in the same kind of region or in the same kind of country or in the same kind of place, you know, and then they experience the karma that they all have in common. That's why we are born in a certain country. But look, you know, what, what, what the countries, you know, making out this pride, this national pride. Huh? And it is still within us, you know. We are Americans, or we are, we are British, or we are French, yeah. We know this and we know that. What do you know? Huh? You have nothing in common with that, you know. Some sort, some, some sort of common you have in common with that. But that, it doesn't really matter, you know, if, if you if one of your countrymen won, 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 won this gold medal or that gold medal. So forget about nationality. I mean, think about of us just now as all monks. No? Just monks that have to learn a lot. No? I mean, of course, like when, when you remember what I say, I mean, the Western monks do differentiate themselves from the Thai monks because, I mean, because of their karma. No? They have certain things that they are lacking, no? just like gratitude, generosity, respect. That's lacking in them. And because, you know, the West doesn't have it, that's why we were born in the West. Maybe probably because out of a punishment, yeah, to learn, you know, that these things have value. That respect has a high value. And I mean, it's highly regarded in the heavens. I mean, if we ever want to come to the heavens, I mean, we have to be utterly respectful. I mean... Some of you have read the prophecies of the Lord Buddha even in one of the prophecies where they get rid of the kings. I mean, that's amazing, you know. I mean, we thought, you know, kings, you know, I mean, it shouldn't be. Everything should be de- democracy. Everybody should be the same. Hmm? But actually in, a, in actually, in fact, it is not the same. We are not the same. Hmm? But we are not different. Not one is better or the one is worse. You know, we just have different abilities and we can use these abilities for our own fortune or for our misfortune. That's why. So, remember that, you know, being French, being British, you know, being German or being American. I mean, there is no such thing in the Chitta. I mean, we have similar karma, huh? I mean, all, you know, all of us, you know, have the same karma of being born in the West, you know, who has done away with the kings, you know. And uh, when, when you look at the prophecy, I mean, the Lord Buddha seemed to be sorry for that, that the human beings have done away with the kings. He said, that's a bad thing. Why is it a bad thing? Because we lost our respect, you know, for something that is higher than us, something that has... A, has an authority, something that has has some wisdom. Hmm? That's why, why you know, that's a bad thing. And when we want to go to heaven, I mean, I mean, in every heavenly realm, there is a leader. There is, you know, there is absolutely highly respect. Huh? So if you don't have that, if you don't respect other people, if you don't look up to other people, if you don't, uh, if you don't value that, I mean, how can we ever go to heaven? Also the same thing, you know, for generosity. How can we get ever to heaven if you are uh, not generous? I mean, people there, you know, it, 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 is, it is one of the most important things, you know. You are only born into the heavenly realms because out of generosity, out of respect and gratitude. Being grateful for what is given to you. Being grateful to your parents or your teachers and things like that. It's of utmost importance. 
And it's not only because we, go, we want to go to the heavenly realm. For us as practitioners, it's all, also important, you know. I mean, because without these things, we, we, don't, we will not progress in our practice. Believe it or not, you know. I mean, you will be stuck if you don't have it. Hmm? You will be stuck at one point, you know, if you lack in these things. Huh? And then you first have to, you know, to remedy this before you can go on with your practice. Hmm? So start it from now on, you know. I mean, you have a teacher, I mean, you should respect him, you know. You should be grateful for other teachers, you know. All the monks are your teachers as well. Huh? Be generous with the things that you have. Yeah? And be grateful for what is given and what is said to you. Huh? I mean, that makes our life so much easier. Huh? I mean, you think it is, is something that we have to that we have to give away. You know, we are stingy about it, but actually, it makes our life so much more beautiful. Having you know, re- having respect for others. You know, having respect for ourselves. I mean, we cannot have respect for others. You know, if we don't have if we don't respect ourselves. And each person, now uh, remember, just as each person is born because of greed and hate. Uh, one has more greed and one has more hate. One has more greed and more hate, you know, than, than other people. But each, each being, you know, doesn't matter in, what, in which of the three realms of existence it is, born, is, it is born because of greed and hate. So don't think of yourself being better than another person because that's, you were born of greed and hate and that person is born of greed and hate. So, with this I come to the end of the talk. Remember this well, yeah. Remember Anicca Anatta Dukkha. And these are characteristics that we constantly need to use in our practice. And remember that, you know, about we are just chittas, you know. Our chitta doesn't have a nationality. So taking in pride of something our countrymen do is not really helpful. And just gets us in conflict, you know, because we all come from different countries. It's, it's the same thing, you know, when we when we think, you know, ah, we were born in the West, we are much smarter than Thais. Huh? I mean, the Thais have, uh, I mean, we can't even compare to the Thais. I mean, in, co- in comparison to the Thais, we are second world. Huh? And they are the first world. Because they have the, the riches of the Buddhist religion and the riches of of actually people, you know, who are attaining to the highest gods. How can we match with that? We always be second class people compared to them. But we tend to look down on them. So that is some, certainly something to remember. We have things that we are lacking in our chitta. And that is what we have to remedy and what we have to develop. And we have also to, to develop, you know, samadhi and panya. And see. That's, but, you know, I, I leave that normally out because for me it is so so clear. I mean, we have the 227 precepts. Okay, so we keep them. There's no discussion about what is. Yeah. Can I do this or can I do that? Can I get out of it? Can I know? If I know it, this is like this, okay, then just accept it like this. So, are there any questions? Now, if there are no, no further questions, I mean, we just close the talk.